Hello Grade 12s, and welcome to the first of three videos on the Doppler effect. In this video from the Answer Series, we will revise sound from Grade 10, and then observe, define and explain the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect applies to all waves, but we are going to start by applying it to sound waves. This is because people first noticed the effect in sound. We describe sound waves as compressions and rarefactions that move through the medium from the source to the listener. We use different words to describe various properties of a sound wave. Amplitude is defined in terms of displacement of particles from their rest position. In sound, this can be thought of as a difference between a maximum pressure and a normal pressure. That will occur in a compression. In a rarefaction, we get a minimum pressure and a negative amplitude. The volume of the sound increases as the amplitude of the sound increases. Frequency is defined as the number of waves past a point per second. The pitch of the note increases as the frequency increases. Pitch is how high or how low a note sounds to us. Period is a time interval. It's defined as the time taken for a complete wave to pass by. These formulae relate frequency to period. Wavelength is defined as the distance between two consecutive points in phase. In sound, one wavelength will be from the center of a compression to the center of the next compression. Generally, speed equals distance over time. If we take the distance to be a wavelength and the time to be a period, then speed equals wavelength over period. But period is the inverse of frequency. So speed is also wavelength times frequency, which gives us the universal wave equation. For sound through air, speed is about 340 meters per second. It varies slightly for different densities of air. Speeds through materials like water or steel are much higher. Now that we have been reminded of the basic properties of waves, here is the Doppler effect. You have probably heard it in the change in pitch of a sound coming from a moving object as it passes you. At the risk of embarrassing myself, it sounds like this. Sheldon Cooper does a better imitation in Big Bang Theory. Just Google it. Less often, we can hear it when we are moving, but the source of the sound is standing still. Pitch, as we saw two slides ago, is related to frequency. So when we hear a pitch different from the source, we are hearing an apparent change in the frequency compared to when they stand still. If the source and the listener moves towards each other, the listener hears a higher frequency. And if they move away from one another, the listener hears a lower frequency. This is in comparison to when they are both stationary. Here is the formal definition of the Doppler effect. You can be asked to write it down in a test or exam. The Doppler effect is the change in frequency of the sound detected by a listener because the sound source and the listener have different velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. Now, different velocities provides us with three possible cases. If neither the source nor the listener are moving, then there's no Doppler effect. If the listener is stationary and the source is moving, we have a Doppler effect. If the listener is moving and the source is stationary, then we have a Doppler effect. Let's look at each of these three cases in turn. There is no Doppler effect when the source and the listener are both standing still. The source emits waves that form a symmetrical bubble of sound. No matter which side the listener is on, the waves arrive with the same wavelength, that distance there between the wave fronts. So both listeners hear the same frequency, which is also the frequency from the source. 
If, however, the source is moving, say to the left, then each successive wave starts a bit further to the left. Listener 1 experiences a shorter wavelength at a higher frequency, while listener 2 experiences a longer wavelength with a lower frequency. You can see the length of the waves in the diagram. This bubble of sound is asymmetrical. If the source is stationary, then we have to imagine the waves moving out from the center as these green arrows show. Listener number one is moving in the same direction as the wave fronts, so it takes longer to get from one compression to the next. So the frequency is lower, meaning fewer wave fronts per second. If the listener is moving towards the source of the sound, then the frequency is higher, because that listener is encountering more wave fronts per second as he moves towards the source of the sound and the wave fronts move towards him in the direction of the green arrow. Here are some questions about waves and the Doppler effect. Let's read through them. You can pause the video as we go along and try to answer them yourself before we look at the answers. Question 1 shows a typical sound wave pattern. We can see the pressure amplitude and the wavelength. Now, select which option shows the ambulance moving away from and which is for moving towards you. Question 2 has an oft-used structure. There are two options for each of these two choices. For the wavelength, it can be greater than or less than. And for the frequency, it can be greater than or less than. You decide which is true for the perceived sound as the source moves towards the listener. Question 3 uses a context where the Doppler effect is very easily noticed. When this police car passes by the man sitting on the side of the road, he notices a drop in the pitch. You can put a name to what he's noticing, and then you can use these values of speed and wavelength to calculate the frequency he heard. Compare it to the source frequency up here to answer the questions in 3, 2, 1. Think of this diagram as a top view or bird's eye view of the sound bubble when you're answering 3, 2, 2. Here is the same diagram. The police car is always at the center of the circle, and the smallest circle is the newest wavefront. You place the source and the listener using these letters on the diagram. Then use your familiarity with the Doppler effect to decide which of these options is correct. Well, we really are squeezing as much as we can from this scenario. Now the man is running towards the accident scene and the stationary police car. We use your knowledge of the Doppler effect to choose the correct answer and then draw a side view of the sound bubble around the police car. Question 4 has two listeners, L1 and L2, each hearing different frequencies. But which one hears which frequency? You have to identify which of the two people is Susan, and of course the other person will be her friend. Your diagram should show a top view of the sound bubble and the positions of both Susan and her friend. This is the point where you pause the video, try the questions on the past six slides, and then look at the answers. Here are the model answers for you to compare to your answers. In question 321, you can use the wave equation in two different ways. If you use the speed of sound and the given frequency, then you find out that the wavelength is 0.81 meters which is longer 
than the 0 0.72 meters that is heard. Because he's hearing a shorter wavelength, the car must be moving towards the man and emitting a higher frequency. If you use the wave equation and you substitute the 0, 0,72 meters so that you get a frequency of 472 hertz, that is greater than the 420 hertz emitted. So he's hearing a sound with a higher pitch than the sound emitted and therefore the car is moving towards the man. Here is the bird's eye view of the sound bubble for questions 322 and 331. In the first one, the source is moving towards the listener initially, and in the later one, it's still moving forward but now past the listener and therefore away from the listener. When you draw your own side view of a sound bubble, it has to be symmetrical around the stationary source because the listener is moving and the source is stationary. Note that words like observer and listener mean the same thing. In question 4, Susan is listener number 1, and her friend is listener number 2. Susan hears the higher note with a shorter wavelength, because the fire engine is moving towards her. If you found this video useful, give it a like, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.